Right before it got there, I made the impulsive decision to lay down on the tracks right before it got there. I wanted the pain to end. I just wanted it to be over. The police report says that 33 freight train cars went over me at 55 miles per hour. Also that the conductor said to the engineer, did you see that yellow flash? The yellow flash was 17-year-old Kristen Anderson. She was grounded and had sneaked out to spend time with a friend that cold winter night. Rather than returning home to angry parents, Kristen impulsively decided to end her life. But somehow, some way, her attempt didn't work. When it was going over me, I felt pain. But more than anything, I felt like a tremendous weight or wind pushing me down. When it stopped, I opened my eyes and I started to look around and trying to figure out just if I was dead or alive. I didn't know what it was like to die. I'd only seen it in movies. I just didn't know what to think. I looked behind me on my right and about 10 feet behind me on my right, I saw my legs. And I knew they were my legs because I had these brand new bright white tennis shoes on them that I just gotten for Christmas. And it just seemed unreal to me. It seemed like it was a horrible nightmare. Even before her suicide attempt, Kristen thought her life was a nightmare. Everything looked fine on the outside. In fact, people were shocked that she'd tried to take her life. She'd grown up with a good mom and dad. She was smart, popular, successful. Up until her first year in high school, she was the friend others came to for help. Then her world started falling apart. She lost four of her friends. One had a brain tumor, two died in a car accident, and one hanged himself in a cemetery. Later, her grandmother died. I just started to think it was, life was horrible, and this world was horrible, and there's no, you know, it was just gonna be miserable the rest of my life. I started to really, um, become a lot more introverted, I think, at this point. But when people would ask me how I was doing, like if I came into work or something like at school, I, I would be like, I'm here. Like, it, almost like, isn't that good enough? I'm here. Like, not like I'm good, I'm bad, I'm, I'm here. Like, After that night on the train track, she was in the hospital for three months. Doctors tried to reattach her legs, but they were unsuccessful. There were a number of surgeries, and then Kristen was told she would probably be confined to a wheelchair for life. So I just started to cry out to God and for the first time and ask him why he would keep me here, why he wouldn't, you know, want me, why he would want me to be here even without my legs. Part of her was mad she hadn't died on the train track. But in the back of her mind, she was a little glad she didn't. She still had questions about what happens when you die. A woman came up to me who I didn't know, who had heard about what happened to me, and told me that I would have went to hell if I died. This sent Kristen searching for the truth. She'd grown up in the church, but God always seemed far off. The concept of a personal relationship with Jesus and a loving God was totally foreign to her. Then a friend of Kristen's showed her God's word. That explained everything. John 14, 6 was the verse that stood out to me the most. And when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, there's no way to the Father but through me. And so I knew that the Father was in heaven. Heaven was where I wanted to know I would have went. Um, but I came to the understanding that I would have went to hell if I died. And so I realized at that moment that God had given me a second chance to go to heaven and to spend eternity with him. And um, so that night is when I became a Christian and I decided to give my life to the Lord. And I prayed, you know, just uh, I realized that my life wasn't mine to take that night. And I asked him to forgive me for that and everything else I'd ever done wrong. Even with a second chance on life, the next three years were tough. There were more surgeries, more medicine, more depression, and still more thoughts of suicide. And I didn't realize how important it was to have um, Christian friends or be part of a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church. And another thing I didn't understand was how important it was for me to be in God's Word every single day. It all started to make sense when Kristen met a Christian woman in the parking lot at her local college. She just shined with the love and light of Christ like no one else I'd ever met before that point. And I just had the greatest conversation with her. When I went home, I was like, God, I want to know you the way that lady knew you. And he basically just told me, Kristen, you have to let me be your best friend. And you, I was still going to all of my friends, my family with my problems before I would go to him. Overnight, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to let you be my best friend. And, you're, and, and I just really, really learned what it meant, meant to follow him as my Lord and keep him number one in my life.
Kristen started attending church on a regular basis and helping with both the high school and young adult groups. She enrolled in Moody Bible School and then started Reaching You Ministries. That's where she works today. Her goal there is to keep people from the deep despair that can sometimes lead to suicide. Now, despite her disability, she never contemplates taking her life. I realized that I needed to choose life. I learned how to you know, not be so extreme where like uh, when something goes wrong, I, don't, I know it's not the end of the world. I ended up getting off of all my antidepressants and all my pain meds that they told me I was gonna have to take the rest of my life and my life hasn't ever been better. I just really try and find my value in God every single day and I really try to seek Him with everything in me and live for Him completely. Kristen Anderson says that a train took her legs, but God gave her a new life. For anyone who feels like giving up like she once did, I just want them to know how real God is and that if they live like He is real, He will transform their lives. And there's so much um, more than they, than they see. They just need to open their eyes and they need to open their hearts. And His plans and purposes for them are much greater than anything they could ever dream of. And I know that to be true, not only because the Bible says it, because I've seen it be true in my own life. So.